Today on the channel, the latest cool toys we're going to be taking a look at are these Retro Zord figures from Hasbro of the Power Rangers line. These are made to look and have the aesthetic of VHS packaging and VHS tapes that we all kind of grew up knowing and loving. Uh, specifically, these are dual VHS cassette mock-ups, so to speak, so two faux tapes in there. But the packaging, pretty straightforward. You've got four Zords here in the line. You've got the Dino Megazord, you've got Thunder Megazord, you've got the Galaxy Megazord, and you've got NinjaCon, which if you're not familiar with NinjaCon, don't feel bad because quite frankly, he's never been in any of the shows, whether it be the American versions or the Japanese Sentai versions. He is in fact, basically just a toy action figure that existed in lore and never really made it to any of the shows. And if you know anything about your Power Rangers stuff, he's basically just a repaint, re reimagination of a ninja or figure from you know years past. So let's go ahead and get these out of their little plastic prisons and check out these figures up close and personal. Now, if you're a box collector, there's a couple ways you can you know open this. At the bottom, it's made to peel the tab off and slide the VHS part out. Um, Obviously you don't wanna do that if you're an in the box guy that really wants to keep this pristine. So your best bet is to just cut the tape around the top and then open it this way. So just a, a tip for everybody out there that's worried about you know keeping their boxes pristine and they still wanna actually open the figure and see what's inside. You're gonna get some interesting uh, little wrapping paper is what I would call it. I'm not, not accustomed to seeing that on toys. Most of the time it's always a plastic shell, but. All the figures are gonna have that. Here we got the Thunder Megazord and of course the sword. And I'll go ahead and open up the rest and we'll get them lined up. All right, now that we have them out of the packaging, I do wanna mention inside the box, there's a little bit of a slip, so to speak, where the VHS cassette portion pulls out. And one thing to note on the front of the VHS, it's all handwritten kind of childhood drawing there with the name of the Zord and a nice little character of it. Really cool touch. Like I said, it's the, the dual VHS cassette, but it is hollow, so it's not like you can really display it unless you want to turn it specifically away from everything. But on the side, it does have the volume one, volume two type of thing for all your Zords. So again, really nice touch. I really like the just the aesthetic of the childhood drawing. You know, a great idea for the packaging in my opinion. Here they are out of the package. Not very large figures overall. I mean, if you're expecting something of the Lightning series or anything like that, um, this will be in line with that, but it won't be to scale. So each figure is roughly at that seven inch scale mark. So nothing to be too shocked about. In terms of uh, articulation, well, there's very minimal articulation, but that is to be expected for this price point. These aren't really supposed to be, you know, highly articulate uh, mobile figures at all. They're just kind of, you know, put them on your shelf, cheap display models. So the head is gonna be able to spin. Shoulders on a Megazord here. It's got his pieces flare up and down. Arms are gonna go up and out and then rotate 360 degrees. His hand's gonna rotate 360 degrees. Nothing in the torso, no twisting, no turning. You can get him to bend a little bit forward, but basically it's just a little bit of a swivel. Legs, same thing. They're not gonna twist and turn or anything like that, but they will be able to bow out just a little bit and then back in, forwards. Minimal walking, but you know, the horns, the saber tooth, teeth, none of that is manipulated. So don't be trying to twist and turn and do anything in a crazy pose with these because for the most part, you're just gonna get them standing straight up and down. And that is for the most part gonna be the same across the board. Each one will have slight differences. So Thunder Megazord here, his arms obviously can't flare out because his shoulders right here would run into the chest piece there. But he's gonna have the same kind of wiggling legs. Hands are gonna be able to rotate, but he's not gonna be able to raise his arms other than this. Lost Galaxy, he probably has the best articulation out of the bunch. Head spins just like the rest of them. Shoulders gonna articulate up and down. Gonna go up and out in 360 degree rotation on those. Same on the hands, but his legs do go quite a bit as far as rotational. So he definitely has the most mobility of the bunch and the least mobility would be old NinjaCon here, which is, like I said, again, is basically just a repaint, uh, slight retooling of, oh, Ninjor here. So we got Ninjor in his battle mode, so to speak, or a samurai mode. And really the only differences are gonna be the heads um, and the logos on the heads. That's, and obviously the paint, the blue and the red, but overall, I mean, these are pretty much the exact same figure. 
So if you've got one, you don't necessarily need the other. Specifically, if you have no affinity towards a character that never appeared in any of the television series, which I can't imagine you wouldn't. So, you know, stick with this one. You don't technically need this one unless you're a collector that just has to have them all like myself. But each sword comes with its own weapon. So you got your power sword here. Very thin plastic, very malleable. You don't have to worry about snapping or anything. Holds its shape pretty well, but it is very, very, very soft. Then we got the Thunder Megazord Samurai Sheath. It does actually have a spot inside of his hip there, so you can put and connect the sheath. Sheath comes there, connects. There's still room to get his hand over it, but no paint job on the sword here either. Just all silver. Lost Galaxy, just like his, you know, his articulation, his accessories are also the best because they're actually painted. So he's got, you know, a gold slash brass hilt here, silver sword, but he's the only one that got a paint job on the sword. So good job there. And of course, NinjaCon over here gets the same kind of sheath, but again, just a silver samurai sword, no paint job, no ex excess deco anywhere like that. But Around $16 is the retail price point for these. Like I said, you can pre-order it on Hasbro or you can go to your local Walmart and see if they're carrying them in stores. I'll put product links down in the video description box below in case you're interested in picking any of these figures up. Highly recommend them for Power Rangers fans, but definitely not a must have for anybody that is just a partial collector, specifically for Power Rangers in general, because some of these are some really deep cuts and that may or may not be appealing to you. So anyways, that does it for this product review. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit that like button, share this video with your friends if you found the information helpful. And as always, thanks for watching guys. It really means a lot.